Hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over Endeavor OS. Uh, as some of you may know, I finally got Endeavor OS a bootable ISO so I could actually install it. And the machine that I'm on now is different than the machine where I did the stats on. That was a Dell Optiplex 7010, and this is the T3500. So it is a different machine. And it's BIOS boot only. Endeavor OS seems to like it. <laughs> so first, I guess we should go through the installation. I went ahead and took snapshots. This was done in a VM, but the installation was exactly the same. So when you boot into your live environment, you're going to be greeted with this welcome screen here. Now, this welcome screen is different than the one we'll end up with, and we'll see you later. First on the list there, it says start the installer, but my advice is to go ahead and update the mirrors right here. Once that's accomplished, then you can start the installer if you choose. You can go ahead and partition it, and there are some interesting tips to look at. You can customize it a little bit, but I, I just updated my mirrors to hit the installer. So I'm going to go next. The next option would be online or offline installation. O online gives you a choice of desktop with vanilla theming. Offline gives you a, a XFCE desktop with Endeavor OS theming with no connection needed. I went online. All right. Next thing, we're going to select our language, our location for our time zone. Then our keyboard, you would scroll through here and select yours if it's different than what I'm using. And then the next thing is to partition your disk. Now you can just to, uh, allow it to treat it however it wants to, but I'll always select manual partitioning. <laughs> and this is what I did. I set it up with four partitions, boot EFI, a swap, root, and a home partition. Now this wouldn't have worked on this machine that I'm on right now because it's BIOS and the virtual box i set it up efi so that is one difference right there all right when you're finished click next here you're going to select your desktop of choice and i believe you can only select one at this point but on the next screen you should be able to select another one if you desire here i left the defaults there and i also added printing and hp printer scanner support all right next Here's where you add your username, password, and elect whether you want to log in automatically or uh, use a password. All right, here's a summary of everything it's going to do. Your time zone, your keyboard, uh, partitioning. When you're ready here, click the install button. It's going to give you one last chance to back out or go back and change something. And you're going to say install now. And so in this case, the installer started at 1050, and it ended at 1057, or rebooted, with time to reboot 1057. About seven minutes to install it. That's not bad. And it, I don't think it took much longer than that on this machine, on the real machine. That was a virtual box, like I said. All right. So I guess first thing is, if you look at my menu here under my favorites, I've got all my typical normal hardware or software that I, I like to have or I need, one of the two. And all the software is just like in any Arch distribution with the Arch repository, the Endeavor repository, as well as the AUR. It's not much you can't get, I don't think. <laughs> Let's start with their welcome screen because that's what you're going to be greeted with when you boot into your installation. You can also, let's see, select initial when you open this up. These are numbered one, two, three, four, five tabs. So you can change that, say OK, and it'll restart and it'll open up on the second tab. And I've just, I guess that's just a little preference thing. <laughs> anyway, Again, uh, here it says update mirrors first, and that's exactly what you should do. Even though it says it's going to copy them over, it's not going to hurt you to rerun that and update the 
mirrors after you've got this, this system installed. Then you're going to update your system. You can update the system here. Let me go ahead and just click on that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I just update through Pac Man, then the only thing I'm going to update is the regular Arch repository packages. And if I want to update the AUR packages, that's, that's another command to get all together. Yay, using yay, or whatever AUR helper you have. And when you run the update here, you get the re regular repository search for updates, but they also search the AUR. So this is like a one-stop shop. And I, that's why I've been using it. <laughs> and I've been using it because I think that's the way they intended it. You can also clean up your package configuration. Uh, you can tell it to do it every week. You can tell it to do it right now. Keep the three. I'm going to cancel out of that because there's none in there. It's not going to do anything. I've already done that today. You choose different wallpapers if you want. I downloaded the wallpapers and they do have some decent ones. Well, <laughs> we have so many it took it a second to populate, I guess. So you can see that's quite a selection selection and this is just one of the two categories this is the community i think there's one called classic all right so assistant these are all web pages or link web links if you if you click on any one of these it's going to open up a browser firefox and it'll take you to these pages which is pretty nice sometimes, like XFCE information. If you're running XFCE for the first time, you may not know how to make your mod key open up the windows or the whisker menu. <laughs> but here you can find out how to do that. So nice. Tips, all of this is web pages as well. Firewall, I think I went over that in the uh, statistic thing that we just did. Firewall is installed and it is active by default. That's that's actually a nice nice thing to have. More apps. Now here's a popular app thing, and I think I may have said this. I don't really use want the regular Arch repository Caden Live. I would rather have Flatpak. So in this welcome thing here, you have choose popular apps to install. And here it is. I may, have, I may have touched on this briefly in the first or this other video. I said I was going to install Flatpak, which I did. And you can see it's bold there, meaning I did install it. Once I got that installed, I just I highlight, I click, ticked it, clicked install. Once that was done, I rebooted it. And then I went to Flatpak, flatpak.org. It told me when I was ready, head on over to FlatHub and select a software so i went to arcade and live and there it is you click on that and down at the bottom here it says here's the command line so you run this command it, it'll install the flat pack now the first time it installs a flat pack this is what you're going to see or this will be similar to what you see Okay, so you'll see out of these packages packages that are listed, only one of them is Caden Live. All the rest of these are dependencies that are required by flat packs. So in other words, the second next time you install a flat pack, if you do, these will already be there and you won't have to redo them. I don't think I've ever I can't remember ever having to add one once it was already done. So don't be alarmed by that. <laughs> Caden Live works fine. I edited, the, edited a video on it earlier just to run through everything and make sure it was going to work. So this welcome screen right here really is a, is going to be a good starting spot for you. And, you know, I would stay in it every day if I didn't know anything about Arch Linux and Endeavor in particular. And I have stayed in it every day. <laughs> I, actually, I put it in my favorites here so I can get to it quickly. and. It don't it won't start every time I start up. All right, let me go to my notes here. All right, we just went over the welcome menu. Let me bring that back up because I see I forgot something here. Pretty important something. 
All right, let's see. Under the welcome tab, uh, tips, nope, assistant, blogs for troubleshooting. All right, and I'm going to click on that. Now, I have not done this yet, but I'm going to, probably by in the morning. What this is is basically a Endeavor, uh, Endeavor's log. And by default, it has about five things checked here. If you say OK right here, it's going to send them, send a personal, it'll send these logs to Endeavor OS, and it'll actually tell you or show you the URL that it sent it to. Let's see, you'll see the default selections. A list of URLs is stored in the OK button. You'll receive a URL that tells the internet address of the logs. When I send mine in, I'm going to, I'm probably going to include most of this stuff and in hopes it helps. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to cancel that for now, which is a great feature. That's an awesome feature. Anytime you run across a snag or what have you, just bring that up, create a report or a log, send it in and see what they say. You might help the next guy. <laughs> All right. So under the quick starter, which I just showed you, I installed Flatpak and then I went to I had already installed Kden Live through Pac-Man. I had to remove it. And once I did that, I run that command I showed you right here. It works perfectly, just like I wanted it to. <laughs> uh, and I may have touched this before too. Uh, SSH is installed, but it's not active. So, show you that real quick. SSH is loaded. It's installed, but it's inactive or dead. So you can enable it. I did enable, as a matter of fact, when I was installing VirtualBox or I was installing Arch Linux in a VirtualBox right here. I SSH'd into it and installed it that way. And I'm hoping to get to this. Let me go ahead and get this started while I'm talking. And just minimize that. This is the endeavor that you just saw the installation on. And the reason why I'm going to bring that up is I want to show you. I personally discovered a new, it's called Ba'u, and it's an AUR helper. And I installed it in this virtual machine just to see what it looked like. And actually, I was quite impressed. I may even put this on my, well, actually, next time I want a graphical package manager, this is what I'm going to use. And I'll show you why here in a minute. Minimize that and see where we're at. Requires password. Okay, so yay is installed by default. Thank you. <laughs> All right, there it is. Ba'u. Oh, got about the welcome screen. Gonna open up, close that out real quick. And I installed this going Y space hyphen capital S. B A U H. And I've already went through the settings in here just to say I've done something. The settings are right here. You can go through here pretty quick. I told it to refresh uh, when it opens. It'll handle flat pack, snap, and snap and web apps. It, this is <laughs> this is a lot of options. I like this. And it's pretty pretty minimal. I'm gonna say no. I didn't do anything to make it change anyway. It's just so simple to work. Here's a little green button that says install. Right there's the program I look for. Just click install. You might have to answer a prompt. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> yes. My password. Okay, so I did have to answer yes and then a password show details you can see what's happening i'm kind of impressed by this <laughs> thanks to endeavor all right what's that here? okay that's another uh i'm not going to install that's another uh another solitaire game uh games solitaire and just like that it's installed now you notice that was not through the aur although if it was an AUR package, the installation would have been identical. 
So I like that. <laughs> That's a pretty nice tool. And it would be particularly nice for somebody that don't know all the package names. I mean, it took me a long time to get my list up and figure out system pro benchmark and profiler was really called hard info and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Bring up my notes again here. I did have one conflict. I was trying to install, or not trying, I did install this system monitoring system right here, which I'm totally impressed by this thing. You got processes, you got your system startup stuff, performance, really nice. Anyway, I, was, I installed this and it's available in the AUR. And it kept saying I had a conflict. Uh, YAD, EOS, and YAD are in conflict. Do I want to remove YAD? Default was no. And so that's what I went with the first time. And the installation just stops and no, nothing was installed. I tried that twice with the same results. The second time, or the third time, I had actually, I had actually done a little investigation in it and found out that somebody else was having similar problems, not the same. It was other, it was several really that had other problems, but the results here were the same. And so I just followed the advice. And when it, I tried to reinstall it again, and instead of taking no, I, I said, yes, remove it. And once it was done, once it done that, it installed. I haven't seen that prompt since, so I'm hoping everything's working out. <laughs> it does say that it's in the Arch repos, where is the problem. All right, so I started to make a list of programs that was not installed by default, and I got one <laughs> YouTube download. <laughs> there are other ones, though. Let's see, this has nothing to do with Endeavor. It's more with XFCE, how to make that keyboard shortcut right there for your whisker menu okay so i have had a problem or two my biggest problem is not really a problem once it starts uh during the login where you get to where your your login manager from there until boot up when it starts booting into the x or the graphic Man, I get so it's like my screen bust into 15 different uh, rectangular screens, and every one of them is pixelated and whatever they call all that. <laughs> it just looks unrecognizable. However, once it does start, I haven't seen any uh, results of any screen tearing. That's why I did the video a while ago. I wanted to make darn sure there was no screen tearing after my system booted. It's unpleasant to look at, but it's not really a problem as long as everything works, and it does seem to work. Okay, you can see I have a blank three there because I hadn't come up with anything else. Sometimes, sometimes, when I, re when I start the machine up, the little volume icon over here will be grayed out, or it'll have that no thing on it saying there's no volume. And... <laughs> I haven't really had to investigate it or anything because when I put my mouse on it, it'll correct itself so far. And I'm not sure, 90% of the time it don't do that, but occasionally it does do that and I don't know why. I'm only assuming that it's got something to do with between ALSA and pipe wire, but I don't know that. As long as it keeps working, I don't care. <laughs> All right, so that's really... Well, that's really my highlights of the notes here. I have really no complaints with Endeavor OS. Everything just seems to work just like you would expect the Arts Linux spin or derivative to work. This is that quick installer. I did install Palmac. I hadn't installed Palmac in <laughs> probably a year or so. And I wanted just to look at it. I don't recall in, uh, installing it anyway. And I just wanted to kind of see what was going on with it now, if there has any major differences. One thing I can tell you, when I installed it, when I installed Palmac, I tried to install what I call Palmac-ALL. Now, that's Palmac-ALL. And it kept stopping. It would get close to being finished. 
and then it would the process would just stop and it would say nothing was installed. I saw where it had a list before where it's Pomac AUR, which is what I used to install anyway. So when I installed that, it went right through, and I have no, no uh, issues with it. I didn't mean to bring this up. I wanted to bring this up about. So with, when I bring up a Pomac All in the past, it would have every one of these: the ALPMs, the AUR packages, the flat packs, and snap support. So to me, it may not call itself Pomac All here, but to me, that's Pomac All. <laughs> You, I mean, you can do some stuff in here. Where this is really good at is if you don't know, if you're a new to Linux or new to Arch Linux, what have you, if you're new to trying to figure out some of this stuff on your own, this is a great way to become familiar. That's exactly how I did it. I didn't even know any better. I would do something like DVD, and I'd hit that, and then I would just run through them, and I would try to read what descriptions they had and eventually i figured out what i might need or might not need and i made a list and i hadn't needed one since but i like that ba <laughs> let me close out my notes here i feel like there's something really important i'm forgetting uh, monitoring center system and remove quick and start log tool let's see what my system profiler and benchmark says or as I know it, hard info, <laughs> which is not available as a regular repository anymore. It's AUR. So under summary, let's see here: operating system, Endeavor OS, Linux. Uh, what else might be here? Boots. Just to tell you, when I first installed on this machine, July the twenty-fifth. Today's August the first. So a week I've been in on this machine. Six days. <laughs> On the T3500, my $25 machine. <laughs> I still can't get over that. <laughs> uh, processor, memory, you got all your stuff in there. And <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about Endeavor OS. I will say this. It's, it's, <laughs> I will say this, you get a default Arch Linux system. And if that's what you're after, this thing right here worked perfectly. I haven't seen, you notice it said in, in the installation uh, there, it showed you where it said, uh, right here. You notice it, that it doesn't give you a whole lot of stuff. The only thing it says here is, oh, uh, tried to click on it, Endeavor OS theming. When you untick this desktop base at the bottom, it'll say Endeavor OS theming. Let me close that and get rid of that. Really, I haven't I haven't seen. I just have not really seen any theming that I didn't do. I'm the one that did it. Everything I saw after my installation was what I would call a vanilla arch installation. <laughs> I haven't had to install a single codec. Audacity imports a video file. The scroll bar or whatever that bar is called shows up. Caden Live works just like it's supposed to. I'm using OBS Studio. Like I said, I'd be really hard pressed to say anything about my experience that has been bad now i don't know what's out on the internet and all in the forums and what the general consensus is about endeavor os and i'm gonna use a bad word here distro watch says they're number two <laughs> sorry and i after this i can certainly see why i mean if you want vanilla arts this is the way to go now, I didn't go with the, all the bells and whistles and everything that I probably may could have gotten. I want to install what I want to install. And I don't want somebody else to install something that I will never use, if ever, use. Anyway, that's enough of my rant. Never OS. Get you a bootable ISO or even a virtual box. Try it out. See what happens. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Bye.